Hey everyone, welcome to my coffee table series. Hopefully I give you guys enough tips and tricks that you can build beautiful coffee tables just like this one, just like I did, in a simple workshop without any really complicated tools. I hope you enjoy them. Yeah, let's jump straight in. So what I'm doing here is I'm just measuring up all the, the different pieces of the second leg and drilling them out and getting all the biscuits sort of biscuit holes drilled out so that uh, we can glue and screw all right i've glued this and clamped it and i've got a beautiful miter join now um what i did on the last legs i think i i didn't do it quite right i immediately screwed uh, drilled in and put screws in and i tried to use the screws as clamps to kind of hold everything together so that the glue would dry and that was a mistake because without the glue being dry it sheared straight away and I couldn't quite get it aligned so what I'm going to do this time let the glue dry then I'll put the screws in and the screws will just act as a strengthening force to hold everything together in case the glue comes loose which it shouldn't because I've got biscuits in there as well now let's see how it goes Okay, so what I did then is just rinse and repeat the same process for all corners, clamp them all up, make sure they were all sitting nice and square and screw them in once the glue was dry. And then come back and do my favorite thing, which is give it another sanding. This was really just to clean off all the uh, uneven spots and the joins. Okay, so a bit disappointing. I switched on my trim router and Nothing happened. Things only a month old. A waste of time back to the shop. An hour later, they replaced it. No questions asked. And we're going to pull the new one out. Hopefully, this time it works. Nice to get another brand new router. Here we go. Okay, router worked perfectly second time round. And I just feel this table really wanted a nice round overlook and not a beveled or chamfered edge so i gave it that and in the end it actually worked out really well came out nice and elegant and then i guess we move into the next phase and i'm sure you guys can only guess what that is and here it is in case you hadn't seen enough exciting videos of me sanding down tabletops but i can promise you this is the last i'll show you at least on this series anyway finishing it off i'm doing the final uh, sure I don't know maybe four or five grit progressions here all the way up to a thousand I think I did just to get it nice and glass smooth I did this over two days it took a long time it's really noisy especially with the vacuum cleaner attached so family you really doesn't like it even with the door closed it just makes such a noise but we got it done and it's uh, looking pretty good Okay, so the idea is we're going to have our legs angled. I decided to change it at the last minute and it looks really, really awesome. Yeah, measured it up, mark them, drill, epoxy the little sleeves in, and then the final polish and we're done. God damn, it's a couple of hours of work left still, at least. Okay, so we marked out the holes. We have one, two, three, four, and five. And now we're gonna drill them properly for the sleeves. And we're gonna measure it off just a bit deeper. As long as we don't go through the wood. <laughs> That's close. Um, yeah, somewhere there. The old tape around the bit trick kind of works really well all right and away we go now what we do is we take the drill that I 
taped around and very, very carefully. Make a couple of holes in each side, the ones we pre-marked. Fill them very slowly down to the right depth. And then what I did once that was done, I came past again with a countersink bit and make sure that I just do a bit of a countersink on each hole because the inserts have a little flange on the top and you don't want that to sit proud of the surface. You want it all to be nice and flush. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, mix up some Gorilla Epoxy, get that on these, screw them in. The reason I do that is just so that they're actually set properly in the wood and they don't unthread themselves or just spin in the hole when I'm tightening the bolts in really tight. Word of warning here, don't use too much Gorilla Epoxy. When I did my dining room table, I flooded the holes, put those in thinking I was smart and half the hole filled up with epoxy and the bolt wouldn't go in. So I had to actually end up re-drilling the hole, which was a nightmare. So it's just a little bit you want, you know, coat the edges, get it in, just to make sure it sets in there. This is an extremely shitty, messy process. So if you're using Gorilla Epoxy like I am, just mix a tiny bit of it up and work quickly. I mean, this stuff dries in minutes and um, I found that it started getting really tacky towards the last of my six bolts. And so I really struggled to get, well, I didn't struggle, but it was a bit messy getting the last one in. If I had mixed enough for all 12 bolts, I think I would have been in trouble. It would have probably set before I'd even finished the, the second set of bolts. Yabadoo, that's drying. And then the other side too, epoxy's ready. So what I'm gonna do, while that epoxy's getting finely hardened, before I flip this over again, I'm just going to go through and do the final two stages. Um, this is actually auto, auto stuff. It's made in the Great of Britain. So this is a paint reviver and this is a polish. And what we're going to do here is this is cutting paste. So we start with that one, and that should go and cut all those little fine scratches out and make a higher gloss. And then we use this one here to polish it up afterwards. So to give you an indication. Oh man, the light's so bad. That's before. Let's see if you can see the difference after. Not really good in this light. So we're finally there and thank you very much for watching if you managed to bear it for this long. Now what we're doing is waxing the top of the table, the final, final, final stuff before adding the legs. This wax I chose to use was a product I found at Bunnings off the shelf. Not very cheap, not as expensive as the Evolution wax that I normally use. But the reason I wanted to, ch to try this one is because it's advertised as a clear or gloss. In the end, probably didn't work as well as I'd anticipated. It didn't come out very glossy. It came out about the same as the Evolution oil wax. I can't tell how hard it is now because um, it's too soon. But the application wasn't difficult and you know working with it wasn't that hard either. It does buff off nicely. Next time I'll probably try something different. A lot of the guys on YouTube are using the, I think it's Rubio and then there's another one called Osmo Coat. So maybe next time I'll try that. But you can see how the color just really pops as soon as the wax gets added onto the table. What I'm gonna do now is probably just put it on a bit of fast forward speed so you can see all the wax being applied and then we'll come back and add the legs and you can see the finished product. Because woodworkers are a lazy bunch and we always want to find the easiest, fastest way to do things and because I love you guys and because I like experimenting and I'm the guinea pig. I decided to try a slightly different method and this actually seems to work really well. Instead of using a spreader to get the wax on, 
we just kind of put some poly gloves on and use our hands rub it in nice and nice and smooth that way you can kind of feel what you're doing a lot easier as well get the wax like ni nicely rubbed in into all, all the different spots on the wood and then once you're done with that you come over it with a, with a rag make sure you rub all the wax off or wipe all the wax off and then get over it again with a buffer and get rid of all the excess be careful when you're using this wax I folded the, the rag up and it almost burnt the garage down because the stuff gets really hard it can self combust all right Merry Christmas everyone it's Boxing Day what I've done I forgot to film this morning but quite easy all I've done is I let it dry for a full day over Christmas while uh, from the first waxing that I've filmed and this morning all I did was put a second coat of wax on but before I did that I tried to clean up all the resin sections again I didn't like the way that they came out with the wax on them so I used some mineral spirits to clean off the wax from the strips polished it up used cutting paste and repolished and then re-waxed and buffed it all out it looks pretty good now now it's time for final assembly So we've done the last thing that I need to do. Well, two last things I need to do. Do, 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 do. Is, when I put my logo right here, I think it'll look really, really nice here. It shows up nicely against the um, resin there and the resin there. And then I'm gonna flip it over again and I'm gonna put some extendable feet underneath. Just so that if it's wonky, I have a feeling it's gonna be wonky on a flat floor, that you can just level it out without having to jam shit underneath and um, use properly leveling feet on I'll get those from Bunnings tomorrow and do that. But it's looking good. Right, so if you've watched till now, we're at the end. Thanks so much for following and watching all my videos. I really, really do appreciate it. And I wish you the best of luck. I hope you've learned something from these videos. Maybe a few tips and tricks. If you've learned one thing, then that's good if I've managed to teach you a single thing. If you have any issues or you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I will answer you on my uh, direct message on Facebook, YouTube, however you guys want to do it. Enjoy and thanks again for watching.